Hey, what is up, everybody? Uh, this is Stevie Breach coming here today. Um, this is the night after a uh, devastating 20-3 to loss to the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Um, the 49ers, basically, as we knew it, going into this year's uh, you know football season, um, were not going to be a very good football team. I mean, when you looked at the team and the offseason moves and, and the things that went down for this team, you knew that this team had some talent, but honestly, as a team, you just knew that uh, it was just too beaten up uh, to be able to, you know, put together a, a winning season. There was no way they were going to be able to compete against Seattle. There was no way that they were going to be able to compete against Arizona. I know that, uh, you know, in my video hyping up the 49er versus Seahawks game, I, I really didn't expect both teams uh, to be coming into this game at two and four. I thought that honestly, the Seahawks, if they were ever exposed uh, it, during the uh, Seahawks versus 49er rivalry over the last few years, I thought that this was honestly the team that uh, the 49ers might be able to beat. I mean, they've been struggling. They started the season 0-2. They did come back and they won two games in a row, but then they dropped two more right after that. So, um... I don't know. I talked to my buddy Alex yesterday um, after the game, and he just, you know, the only way he could put it when I asked, you know, why is this team struggling? Uh, he talked about the, the fact that the offensive line um, is horrible for Seattle this year. Um, you know, uh, Russell Wilson uh, has already been sacked. Um, I think the stat was like 20 times this season, and he's on he's on uh, pace to get sacked uh, over 60 times during the whole season. Um, and, and if you're getting sacked 60 times, that's 60 hits on your quarterback. And that's not even counting the times that he's able to get the ball off in time, but he still takes a hit. Um, and uh, for a guy like Russell Wilson, you know, he's always been pretty big. He's always been able to, you know, absorb a hit. But being hit that many times in a season uh, takes a wear on you. And um, it just gets to the point where um, maybe there's one time you're not able to get up. Um, but uh, the the Seahawks won the game. I'm sure that you know for a team um, that's three and four, uh, I, I'm sure that Seattle's glad that they got a win and they're behind their team. Um, but th they know that there's a tough hill to climb. Um, Arizona, I believe, is sitting at five and one at the top of the NFC West. That's going to be a hard team to catch. Um, the Rams are going to be tough. It's going to be hard for Seattle to make sure that um, they're going to be able to find the playoffs. It's, uh, but maybe they're going to be able to say that they don't have any more woes. Maybe they win out the year, and, and maybe they're fine. But uh, the San Francisco 49ers, they're not fine. There's a lot of talk um, about what's going on in San Francisco. A lot of people are, are blaming Jed York, uh, the owner, uh, for basically um, – what is going on with the team? I mean, basically, if you look uh, at, at the losses that the Niners took uh, during this offseason with uh, not bringing back Harbaugh, you can debate whether if he quit or whether if he was fired. Um, a lot of people are pointing to last year's Thanksgiving game uh, where the Niners uh, played the Seahawks. And after the game, the Niners really didn't have it all that day. Um, the Niners, I think, are 0-5 in the last times that they've play, played Seattle. I know that they haven't beat them in the regular season the last two seasons. And there was the uh, NFC Championship game the one year um, that we lost at, at the very end. But um, the Seahawks are, are, are a good team. You, you can't beat that. I think they've won the Super Bowl and they've... Um, gone to a Super Bowl in the last two seasons. I think that's right. Um, so it's, it's hard to knock that team. The way that they built it were around Russell Wilson, uh, Mershon Lynch, that you know, you know, big, huge defense that they have. The 49ers, you know, because they're in the same division, because they play them twice a season, they're always going to be pointed as this is the team that you, you should be better than. And um, I don't want to make any excuses for them. I don't want to say that, uh, you know, it's – um, you know, not Jed York's fault, or it is Jed York's fault, but uh, as ownership, you have to take responsibility um, for your team. And, and honestly, I think that when J John, um, John Harbaugh left and um, he was replaced by um, this guy with a T, um, I, I still can't say his name right, um, I know that they signed him to a very low contract. And in my eyes, I looked at that as they didn't really have faith that he was going to be the real 
coach of the San Francisco 49ers. I thought that maybe he might coach them this year. And then because of his low contract, they could fire him if anyone else came available um, that they thought would be a better fit to take over this team. Um, and they could pay him more money and they wouldn't be like they were having to pay two coaches at once. Um, but, you know, even if you get over that, um, you can't, I don't think you can blame um, Jed York um, for the problems uh, with with the 49ers had, which was you know the players kept retiring at the end of last season. We thought we lost um, one of the best linebackers uh, in the league in Patrick Willis, uh, and then of course when Borland retired, um, that was a real big shock. A guy that almost won the Rookie of the Year um, in the NFL last year, but then um, just you know Frank Gore left. Um, honestly, in my mind, I thought that Frank Gore. Um, it's at the point where it was the right time for them to let him go. Um, yeah, I think that honestly, Carlos Hyde in the backfield is um, a major acquisition for us. And we drafted him from Ohio State. I thought that he was going to be a person that we could really build behind and get behind. Um, you know, we lost Parrish Cox. He was one of my, my favorite cornerbacks. Mike Ipate, um, you know, off that line. Um, that's a huge loss for him. Honestly, when I looked at that team, I thought that he was one of the guys that was most, um, the, one of the, the, the guy that we needed to sign free agency wise more than anyone else. Make sure we get this guy before we move on and go to anything else. Um, Stevie Johnson to me, honestly, was a real big surprise because I, I didn't think that Anquan Bolden was going to be, um, you know, playing um, forever for us. I, I thought, honestly thought last year would be his last season. And I thought Stevie Johnson was there to re replace Crabtree when he left as a free agent and be our number one. He was released and then he was signed by the San Diego Chargers. Uh, Mike Crabtree, uh, he left us uh, via free agency and he signed with the Oakland Raiders. Uh, according to him, he said that San Francisco, you know, offered him more money uh, and he didn't want to take it because he wanted to get out of, get out of town. Um, I don't know if that's just him talking trash. He's, he's talked trash about Kaepernick since leaving. He's got a chip on his shoulder. I thought that Crabtree was a good wide receiver. I don't think Crabtree lives up to the hype that he had when he was drafted. Um, of course, when we did draft him, he was injured with his broken foot or his broken leg, whatever it was. Uh, but um, I don't know. I, I don't feel like the Niners built a winning football team. I think it started um, with, with Harbaugh leaving, um, you know, and then not being able to sign Ipate. Um, and then, you know, just basically just trying to piece together a team piece by piece. Um, Jared Hain was a big, uh, you know, signing. He brought a lot of news to the team. Uh, from what I've heard is he hasn't really learned how to pick up blocks in the backfield. And that's one of the reasons why he's not playing. A lot of talk about him from the Seattle game not being put on the roster. Um, people talking about he might get cut. I don't think that he was cut. I think that he just honestly wasn't dressed for the game. And I don't think that's a big deal if he's anybody else on the team. But because it's Jared Hain and he has such a big fan base uh, back in Australia, I think that's why he's picking up so much press. But as of any, anything that I've read, I don't think he's been cut. But now the, the biggest topic in the room is, uh, you know, what are the 49ers going to do at quarterback? There's a lot of people calling for, uh, you know, calling Kaepernick's head, um, saying that it needs to get cut, saying that it needs to get traded. Uh, we've we've heard him referred to uh, as Kaepernick um, and a whole bunch of other things. I'm going to pull a Terrell Owens here. Colin Kaepernick is my quarterback. I lived and died with Alex Smith as my quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. I loved him until the day that he wasn't on the team anymore. Um, I was the guy, um, Colin Kaepernick's rookie season, saying that uh, I'm not 100% sure Kaepernick is the guy that we should be going with. I kept on wanting to give the ball back to Alex Smith. Harbaugh had moved on, I, I believe it was after a concussion in a bye week, uh, to Alex Smith saying that uh, you know Kaepernick was our guy. Um, he drove us all the way into the playoffs. Very surprisingly, um, we were able to beat uh, the New Orleans Saints uh, and then move. That was, that was a big step forward for us. I think we ended up losing to the Giants in the NFC Championship game. Um, that, was, that was a big step forward for San Francisco. It was almost like we were years ahead uh, at the time of where people thought we were supposed to be. We were a very surprising turned around team. Harbaugh, I believe, was a rookie coach in the league. And um, we took huge strides um, from the Mike Singletary teams. Um, at that point when Alex Smith was traded, I, um, you know, adapted to, to Colin Kaepernick being our guy. He had another great season. Um, 
all I got to say is, is that there's problems in San Francisco. And I, I don't think they're only Colin Kaepernick's fault. If we trade Colin Kaepernick, if we cut Colin Kaepernick, who are we really putting in there as quarterback? Are you really happy with Blaine Gabbard, you know, running the team? Some people say that he had a good a good uh, preseason. That's preseason football. That's not real football. Blaine Gabbard was a horrible, horrible quarterback in Jacksonville. And I know that Jacksonville hasn't had a good quarterback there in years, but um, I don't think that he is the answer to the 49ers. And I don't really know... Who's going to be walking through that door? I was listening to ESPN today, basically saying that the 49ers should trade um, Colin Kaepernick, and the one team that should be calling as of right now would be the Philadelphia Eagles, um, that he would be a great quarterback to, to um, go into that system, um, you know, being the you know sort of, sort of running quarterback, being able to use the fast running backs, um, the, 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 the wide receivers, just that high-octane offense that, you know, has been being pumped out of Oregon. Um, it, you know, the, the offense with, um, Murray, uh, and Bradford, um, who's Philly's wide receivers out there. They don't have Jackson. Jackson's on the, the Redskins. He got cut, but, um, you know, honestly, that sounds like a great system. It sounds like a great team. I don't know, man. I, I think that honestly, at times Colin Kaepernick has been in the top 10, talk in quarterbacks. The 49ers paid him and um, he, he's, he's he's dropped. I, I, I don't want to say that he's in the bottom half of the quarterbacks in the NFL. Obviously, his play hasn't been up to par. Um, I, I, I blame the offensive line uh, for not being able to block. We, you know, definitely you've been able to see that we haven't been able to run the football that well. Uh, but um, there needs to be changes in San Francisco. I'm I'm not going to be calling for Jed York's head. I think that he's going to make them. I think that Balky, the GM, is going to be making moves. I think that honestly, this season was just looked at as a dead pan season. Get us to next season. Let's see what we can draft. Let's see what we, what free agency moves we can make. I think that honestly, the Vikings game messed with the 49ers this this year. The the 49ers went out there. They won opening day against the Vikings. That surprised a lot of people. Um, we scored some points. Maybe people said that it wasn't going to be as bad as we thought it was going to be in San Francisco. We had the one good game, which was sort of like a mirage, um, you know, playing against Baltimore. Um, let's just face it. The 49ers more than likely are probably not going to win five games this season. That's going to be putting us pretty nice into the draft. We have a very hard... Um, you know, run coming up over the next four games. Um, we play the Rams, we play the Cardinals, the Seahawks, and um, there's another team in there that we're probably not going to beat. Then we play the Bengals, then we play the Browns, um, then we play, you know, some other teams um, somewhere along the way. Maybe we can squeak out a win against the the, uh, the Rams. I hope we can beat the Browns. Um, let's just, you know, see what we can do in the off season. Let's just get through these games. Um, it's not going to be fun. Nobody likes losing. Um, but you know, but, you know, let's not jump off the bridge. Let's not burn our bridges with Colin Kaepernick. He is our quarterback. I think that honestly, at times he's been one of the best quarterbacks that there is in the NFL. There's not many real franchise quarterbacks out there. There's guys out there who play quarterback. Um, but Kaepernick has shown that he's able to lead this team. We've been to the Super Bowl. We've been to two NFC Championship games. I think he, he is a very big part of it. I think that also coaching was a big part of it. Um, you know, key role players that aren't a part of the team anymore. Let's find a way to bring those guys back into the fold um, by drafting guys, picking up guys um, for free agency. And I think the Niners can climb up and be a team in the West again. I think that honestly, we just had to hit the reset button after Harbaugh leaving, and um, we'll be fine. I mean, every team falls down. We just need to find a way to get up. That's the best part of a franchise, turning it around and getting back into being a real football team.